Let's talk about get property and set property. These are two actions that are now available in the Unity object entry of the Actions browser. You can add them like any other action. Let me get rid of that and show you a slicker way to add it to your workflow. I'm going to choose this material right out of my project, drop it right onto the State tab, and I get the option for choosing Get Property or Set Property, because I can either get or set properties on this one material object. In this case, I'd like to set some. You can see that the name of my object, Material Floor, has already been set as the target object, which is pretty cool, and the appropriate type has been set for my object. So now I can just go ahead and pick whatever property type I would like. And if I click on this, I get a list of properties I can adjust on this particular object. Uh, let's take a look at a few. If I choose the color, I get a color pop-up box. That allows me to set a color. If I had chosen uh, instead, let's say, texture, now I can change the texture instead of the color. So you can select directly here, or I could just drag a texture on. Now you may have noticed uh, something really slick is going on here. I'm not losing focus as I click around on all these things. And that's because I have lock set up here, uh, right above the graph window. If I turn this off, let me show you the behavior. Uh, if I wanted to select something over here, if you're really quick about it and you drag, you can, uh, you can change that without losing focus. But more often than not, you're going to want to look at something, like maybe you need to look at something in the inspector, or you need to adjust something over here on one of these other objects, and you've lost focus. If you try to drag anything into this window, it won't work because there's no active FSM or state over here in the graph. You'd have to come back and reselect the object, make sure the state was active. If you had multiple ones, it might be several states, and you may not get the one you want, and then you could come in and reset what you wanted. Well, if you turn on lock, that's going to hold this information in place. Whatever actions you have in this particular state are going to remain in the viewport. So if I click around, I can select all kinds of other objects, and I haven't lost focus. See, that's still right there. And if I turn that off and I start clicking around, then I lose focus again. So you can really easily control how you would like Playmaker to behave when you're doing this sort of drag and drop. Okay, let's take a look at a get property example. I'm going to drag this cube right here into my state tab, and I'll choose get property. And the cube has been set up as our target object, as we would expect. So under property this time, I've got a much larger list, and that's because different objects will have different properties available that can be get and set. So not every object is going to have exactly the same list. Uh, you'll find some of these same things in multiple objects. Others will be unique to particular objects. So just be aware that you'll get a different list with different objects. Uh, let's use tag for our first example. Let's say I want to find out what tag is sitting on this object, this cube. And it gives me the option to store a string, because when it finds out what that tag is, it needs to tell me what the name is. So I need a variable there. I can come over here to the variable tab. Let's set up a string, and I'll just call this Result string. Coming back into the state tab under store string, I can choose result string as a pop up. You can then use that variable anywhere else you'd like. Let's say I chose something else instead. Uh, how about the collider? I'd like to find out if there's a collider on this cube through this get property. And of course, I can't use the same variable because it was a string. And it's now asking me to store an object. So that's a hint that the type is an object and not a string. Let's come back to the variables. Uh, let's make a new variable. How about we make it an object right there out of the list? And we'll just call this result object. And now we should be able to come back over. Ah, but something's wrong, right? It says object, and we made an object, but it doesn't work. Well, why is that? Let's look. Object type. That's because each object has its own object type. They're not all just basically objects. If I click here and look under Unity Engine, there's a giant list of stuff here. I have a very tall monitor, and uh, Unity scales this to be roughly the size of your monitor. So half of this list is running off the screen that you can't even see. <laughs> but you can notice, thankfully, that it's all alphabetically listed. 
And if I come down and choose Collider, I now have a Unity Engine dot Collider rather than a Unity Engine dot Object. So we've set the type of our object to Collider. Now if we come back, remember we're looking for the property Collider. Now it appears because the type matches. All right, that's really important. Uh, another example of that, let's say I had chosen um, rigid body out of that list. We can no longer use that variable because its type is collider. It's not rigid body. So if you come back over here, you can edit that same one or make a new one. It's up to you. Unity engine. Um, and unfortunately, rigid body is off your screen. But there, I've picked it. Unity engine dot rigid body. You come back. And now once again, it's got the right type, so it's going to work. So key point. So that there is get and set property. A lot of power right here.